Hi, welcome back. I am reviewing a brand today that I have been wanting to try for months and months and months. This is a brand that several of you all introduced me to, several of my UK viewers. I know several of my US viewers have also invested in this brand. And it is the very convenient brand called Trini London. So I see why this has been so heavily requested for me to try and um, test out. It is pretty much an all cream cosmetic company and the concept is that you build your own custom makeup stack. So all of these products essentially that you purchase are going to come apart and you can make your own little convenient stacks here. So I, um, I have been eyeing these products for months. There were a few that have been sold out and so I've just waited and kind of held off until everything was in stock so I could um, purchase them and give you guys a full review. So I have been wearing these for a full week now. I have a pretty good idea as to how every single product works for me. And I have to say, I haven't been this excited to review a company uh, in such a long time. So this has just, this company has just really intrigued me. And I wanna say that a big reason the company has intrigued me is because of the founder. She has a very big presence in their social media and uh, especially their YouTube channel. Her name is Trini Woodall. I'm not super familiar with her if there are some people out there that um, I'm, I, I just know her from Trini London, but I feel like she is pretty well known in the UK. Uh, and I think her presence is very electrifying. It's very fun when you watch her. And I, I, I don't want to compare the two, but I feel like I'm very drawn also to Charlotte Tilbury products because she has that same type of kind of go-getter personality. So last thing I want to mention, and we'll get into the review, I really appreciate that Trini London is very age-inclusive in their marketing. If you go to their social media and their YouTube channel, they are so great about demoing these products on not just 18 and 20 year olds. They have such a great selection of uh, models that can, I mean, I don't know the exact age of their models, but I would say some of them are 60 plus. And I think it's really refreshing to see a brand doing that because it speaks volumes to the brand. And I um, um, how inclusive they're being in their age range and their age marketing, but also just how well the products um, work on a variety of skin types um, at different age levels. So you will notice that if you check out their social media uh, and they're, they're just everything online, their website, you're, you're going to notice that that's um, a reoccurring theme and I like it. Okay, let's get into the products. The first thing I'm gonna start out with is one of the few products on their website that aren't in the little teapots here. That's what these are called. They're called teapots. This is their BFF cream, and it's what they kind of market as this universal product. It can be worn as a primer. It can be worn as your foundation. It can be worn underneath your foundation. I think even on the back of this, it says, yes, you can wear it over or under just a touch, which is their concealer. So uh, this is the first thing that I wanted to talk about because in, when you watch a Trini London tutorial, this is what they always start out with. This is very reminiscent of, if you guys remember, I mean, they still make this product, but back in the day, this is just reminds me for some reason of my childhood, like childhood makeup. Um, Alme made those shade adjusting foundations where it comes out white and then it adjusts your skin tone. That's the exact concept of this. So um, they come in five shades. I think the shades could be definitely expanded more. I think five is pretty limited. So I ended up picking up the shade light medium. I think overall it fits my skin tone perfectly. I will say I wish that I would have bumped it up to medium though because it's a really, really sheer product. And sometimes when products are really sheer, I just prefer a little bit more color. So if you're gonna go off my current skin tone, maybe go with the medium if you want something that gives you just a tad bit more color. If you're not into that, then light medium would probably uh, be the best fit for you. So, but you can take the quiz and it will help you out with that. Um, so this is something that definitely, if you want to wear it with a full face of makeup, you need something to accommodate it. You do need to wear a concealer with it. I did wear this a couple of days by itself without concealer and it just can't, in my opinion, withstand uh, a lot going on, if that makes sense. It kind of just looks a little 
patchy at the end of the day if you wear like a blush and bronzer on top of it uh, and especially eyeshadow it just it's not cohesive enough for me so you definitely do I feel have to wear something with this now this is definitely something I think would that would be perfect to wear to the pool wear to the beach uh, running errands just throw a little bit of this on and some mascara totally fine for that but as far as layering a lot of product on top of it you really need something that's going to offer, I think, a bit more coverage. My second critique with this is that it costs $46.50 US dollars, so $46.50, and I can think of quite a few products in my own collection that can do the same thing that this does, if not more, for half of the price. So a good example for that is something like my Bare Minerals Complexion Rescue. I'm going to get definitely a little bit more coverage with this. This is something that I can easily wear with whatever I want. And it also has an SPF 30 in it. So, um, and I think that this is $29 to $30. Uh, something like a drugstore option, the Neutrogena Healthy Skin Liquid Makeup. This has an SPF 20 in it, has a good light medium coverage to it. So I, I'm perplexed. You are definitely paying a little bit of a premium price for something that is going to offer you such a sheer amount of coverage. So I feel like this is something that you will have to decide if you want to pay that price for just to have, um, let's just say a full like Trini collection. Oh yes, before I forget, this does have a scent and I am happy to report that it is glorious. I love the smell of this. It is such a nostalgic, fresh smelling product and it does not linger. It goes away within like 10 to 15 seconds, but it's the probably one of the first face products that actually has a scent to it that I really do enjoy. I can't put my finger on it. The only thing I can say is that it's almost like a combination of fresh and citrus to me. And it's not in a bad way. It doesn't smell like perfumey. So um, yeah, if you're kind of off-putted by scents like I generally am, I wouldn't really worry about it because it smells really good. And it just not it's not abrasive it's not offensive when you put it on so i mentioned that you definitely need something to wear on top of bff cream if you want to do a full face of makeup so trini offers two concealing products i chose the just a touch concealer they call it concealer in some things and they call it foundation and other things i would definitely consider it to really work well or best as a concealer and i got the shade trentron which is it's kind of just slightly a little dark on me right now, but I know here in a couple weeks it's going to be perfect. Uh, I was actually recommended this shade, I think, Zandy. So if you um, want to go off my what my website recommendation was, it was technically Zandy, but I wanted something that was my actual skin tone. So um, Trentron, this is the shade that I went with, and this is what I have been layering on top of my BFF cream to give me a little bit more coverage. I feel like I am still kind of on the fence with this product. Uh, the reason for that is there are some days when I look at my skin later on during the day and I think, oh, my, it looks fine. And there have been other days where I have kind of been like, hmm, um, I don't know. I don't think this is holding up the best on me. Uh, so it, I'm kind of in between with this right now. This is probably one of the only things I feel like I'm a little bit indecisive with is the formula to me is somewhere in between a glossier stretch and a mac studio finish it has a nice i like the coverage level on it it's like a light medium coverage not as sheer as a glossier stretch not as full as a mac studio finish i really generally do prefer these kind of um, harder like pot concealers but uh i don't know i'm not fully in love with this yet and now i'm wondering if maybe i would have liked their serum concealer a little bit better because they did have another concealer formula option uh, i just went with this one because like i said it's kind of like their hero product that they market alongside of bff cream so for me I'm not one I'm not 100 not 100 on it yet do I think it's a bad concealer no there are so many other concealers 
I can think of that I've applied and I've just been like, nope, that's, it's not it for me. And I don't get that vibe with this. When I apply it, it looks fine. It's kind of just how it wears off on me throughout the day that I'm still unsure of. The next product is bronzer. I got their bronzer in the shade Gensta. It is very similar to Nude Sticks Bondi Bay, my Milk Makeup Matte Bronzer color wise. Uh, very similar shade. It's kind of just like this very light caramel tone. I definitely wish I would have went with the other shade uh, that they had. They have two bronzer shades. This is definitely the one that's recommended for lighter skin tones, and then they have one that's recommended for darker. The reason I wish I would have went for that one, the one that's slightly darker, is because I feel like it's a little bit more neutral. This is definitely a very warm, warm, warm tone bronzer and sometimes when I wear really sheer makeup I want a bronzer that's a little bit more neutral because these can tend to look just they can sometimes turn a little bit a little bit too orange you know Every, everybody's been there we've done that um, but as far as the formula goes I have no complaints with it um, absolutely nothing wrong with it it applies easy it definitely has a dewy finish to it very similar to again like a nude sticks uh, all over, what are those called? The nudies all over face color. I would definitely say the formula is very similar to that. It gives you this sheen to the skin. And I have powdered my skin just to let everyone know. And this is the sheen that's kind of breaking through. So it's a pretty, pretty glowy product. Uh, but overall, really no complaints with it. Next up is the flush blush. So they have two blush formulas. There's the flush blush, which is just marketed for the cheeks. And then they have lip to cheek, which is obviously a convertible style product you can use on your lips and your cheeks. I just, I wanna go ahead and categorize them together because I'm not really sure of the difference. I feel like they are almost identical or almost the same formula. So in the flush blush formula, we will start out with it. I got the shade Electra. It's a nice soft pink, nothing overwhelming, very subtle, which is what I like. I really like this formula on the cheeks because it is a bit of a drier formula. And I like that in my cream blushes because it means that it has grip and it means that it's going to hold and last on your cheeks as opposed to something that is the consistency of, let's just say Glossier Cloud Paint that are a little bit more liquidy, um, not as pigmented. And I feel like on me, those tend to just fade throughout the day. This holds on really nicely on my cheeks and also, has a really pleasant scent. This is the first product within my stacks that I've noticed actually has a scent to it. And it smells just like a MAC lipstick. It's a very soft vanilla scent, no problems with it. So it's definitely a matte finish. And that brings me into the lip to cheek. So I got the shade Lady J in lip to cheek. Again, it has the exact same scent to it and the exact same texture. So I, I'm not sure what the difference in the two is. They just kind of market the lip to cheek for being made uh, for as a lipstick as well. Uh, formula feels almost identical. The difference in the colors, Electra and Lady J. Lady J is definitely a little bit deeper. I'm wearing it on my lips right now and it definitely has more of a peachy finish to it. It's a gorgeous color. I love it. This is like one of my favorites for sure in the stack. Uh, it's definitely something I can wear every single day. But as far as the difference between the two, I might just suggest if you want to obviously save money or maybe cut back or uh, slice some things out if you're considering uh, purchasing these products, I would probably just go with the lip to cheek and use it as my blush and my lip color. Um, I definitely feel like the Electro Shade wouldn't have been super necessary, um, but uh, there probably is a difference in the formula. I'm not the chemist over here. I'm just reporting what I see and what I feel. Last product in my face stack is the Sheer Shimmer. And this is, I think, supposed to mimic like a lip gloss. I got the shade Dido, which is this really pretty sheer light pink. It has some shimmer in it. I'm wearing it on my lips right now. It definitely does lighten the lip color up a bit. I think there were only like maybe four or five shades in um, the lip shimmers, but I really like it, it's fun. Do I think it's a necessity? Not really, but um, if you're looking to add something that's just fun, non-essential to your stack, this is something that's really pretty. I don't, it's got a very faint scent. It, it's not as vanilla-ish as the other two, but uh, really pretty color 
And yeah, it, it's, it's, it, it's like a lip gloss. <laughs> So last but not least, we have my eye stack. These are four eyeshadows that I chose and I had a really hard time choosing because all of the shades just looked phenomenal. I This was probably the hardest part for me and there were a few that were recommended, obviously, from my quiz uh, for my skin tone and my hair color and then some were not recommended and I went off the grain a little bit and did choose a couple of those colors, um, but I would have Talk about I want to I'm gonna break these down by color because I feel like the formula is different on each of them so I want to talk about the two that I'm currently wearing on my eyes right now uh, they are the shades wisdom and Emperor they're both matte colors they don't really show any sign of shimmer in them and I wanted to go with something that was obviously neutral versatile something similar to my Laura Mercier caviar stick and uh, I feel like these were kind of just like my safe bets that I knew I would definitely like. So Wisdom is this nice kind of, it's like a warm taupe color. I know taupe is tr traditionally more of a cool tone, but this is like a taupe that is just slightly a little bit warmer. Love this shade. It's a really great all over color, a really great transitional shade if you wanna pair something darker with it, which leads me into Emperor, which is this, oh, this gorgeous, just rich, like mahogany brown. It is so dark, it is so beautiful. Uh, okay, so let's get into application. And application is super easy with these. You could apply them with your finger or a brush. Uh, the formula. So this is where I, uh, things are gonna have to like jump back and forth because I feel like each of these colors is very different. With these two shades, I feel like they are the longest lasting on my eyes. Uh, when you apply them, it's very apparent that they don't fully set. Now, if you remember recently, I talked about the RMS eye polishes and how those were borderline kind of oily on the lids. They definitely had to be reapplied throughout the day because they were prone to creasing. I feel like this is somewhere in between that formula and a caviar stick. So definitely don't have like the setting power and the lasting power as a caviar stick, but they don't fade as quickly as like the RMS eye polishes. So speaking of fading, I do notice that these fade a little bit on me, these two colors in particular. They fade the least on me out of all of the shades that I got, um, but I just applied these two colors less than two hours ago and I can definitely tell there is a, an intensity difference. I do think that they fade gracefully on me though. So uh, yeah, these were my favorites out of the two. I'll definitely continue to still use them. I don't think I would fully trust them like for an event wearing um, something that I just felt like I did not want it to crease. So the other two shades I got were kind of just meant for fun. The first one is the shade Moon, and then the second is the shade Chariot. Chariot is this very interesting, like multi-dimensional color. It's like a khaki with a deep brown in it and then like this golden shimmer. It's very interesting. It was definitely the one I was most excited for. And then the shade Moon was not recommended for my hair color, eye color, skin tone, but I just, I, I bought it anyways and they were definitely right. Um, it's not the best option for me. It's definitely like this silver pewtery shade. It was described as an oyster, a sheer wa wash of oyster on the eyes. So that's why I went for it but uh, looking at it on my skin tone it's definitely I think more suited for more fair skin and maybe like blonde hair blue eyes uh, but I've worn it a couple of days and I would definitely say the formula of these two shadows aren't as long wearing as the matte ones so I don't know if it's because this one in particular is so sheer but within like three to four hour mark on me definitely have to reapply it's almost it almost dissipates because it is such a light sheer wash color. The second shade Chariot, like I said, I was most excited about this shade and unfortunately it was the one that disappointed me the most. So I had such a hard time with not only the application with this, but also the lasting power. So on the website, this is a very like rich tone on the model's eyes. It's very opaque, very rich. I could never get it built up to that situation. It was always 
very sheer no matter how much I built up and almost immediately it started creasing on my eyes. So this for me is just almost, I, I'm going to try to work with it a few more times and if I just can't work with it or I can't figure out a way to make it look better on me, I guess it will just be my one dud from this entire collection. But I, I definitely have felt disappointed with this one just because I could not get it to work in the slightest for me. So as far as the eyeshadows go, I feel like um, they aren't a formula that I would reach for over my caviar stick, but they're definitely really easy to apply the two matte shades that I have. I can definitely see myself uh, traveling with these if I wanted to bring my stack with me. Um, but again, I feel like I need to probably try a couple other shades to really decide if hey, maybe it's just like the matte formulas that work better for me. Maybe there are um, other formulas that I didn't even try out. You know what I'm saying? Like there's a lot of different finishes with these eyeshadows. So as far as um, the shadows go, the matte ones were um, my favorite and the longest lasting for me. Okay, so that is my full Trini collection as of right now. What are my final thoughts? Honestly, I feel like there are some gaps that could be filled. Uh, the concealer I was kind of just in between on, so I'm wondering if the serum concealer might have been a better option for me. Bronzer, like I said, I kind of feel like that darker one was a little bit more neutral. So um, there are some things that I'm unsure about, but there were also some things that I really did enjoy. I think it's really hard for me to 100% judge this brand accurately because I own so much cream makeup. So for me personally, I can think of a lot of things that I have in my collection that mimic the Trini London products. The thing with Trini is that if you're someone that is looking into this brand, you're probably looking into them for the convenience factor. Uh, so if you're someone that travels a lot, someone who's limited on space and you don't own a lot of cream products, I think this definitely would be a really great investment. If you don't have the money to really, because these are premium price products. They're pretty high up there. If you don't have the money to blow on creating like a full stack, I think it would be completely fine to slowly build up your collection. I think I'm definitely going to explore the brand a little bit more, just see if I can fill in those gaps and then kind of report back later. Um, but overall, the ideal person I see this working for is someone who definitely does travel a lot. Someone who may not necessarily have the fullest makeup collection and you want something that's really convenient and just right there that you can grab. I think this would definitely be the um, way to go. Pack Packaging is exquisite. When it came to me, it was in the most remarkable packaging. I wish I would have saved that to show you, but uh, since it is such a premium price, I still, I feel like you can, you can still pick up on that in the packaging. You don't feel like you're getting super cheap things. So um, let me know if you're a Trini London user. Let me know if you have any tips, some ways that you would recommend using these products. I would love to know your thoughts, maybe some things that didn't work for you and maybe some things that are your favorites. I think that always helps people out who are reading through the comments. Uh, so they can maybe get a better idea if they have a different skin tone, different skin type, um, just overall what your experience is with the brand. So I hope this review gave you some more insight. I know it's on the longer side, but um, I really wanted to break it down for you. I hope you enjoyed. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments as well, and I will see y'all in my next one. Bye.